So let's finish this up. Um, in the previous part, we we're talking about the different ideas of how life arose. You know, is it the traditional Darwinian tree of life where there's an ancestral organism or population, not one single thing, but a population and it gave rise in this tree-like fashion that evolved over billions of years into the current biodiversity we have? Is it this more the bush-like appearance ancestor of all life gave rise to different branches or kind of a newer idea fairly newer idea is it this ring of life that life arose gave rise to bacteria and archaea and the archaea and bacteria some kind of endosymbiosis or fusion that gave rise to the third group the eukaryotes or is it possible it's just something completely different that we haven't figured out yet so all sorts of possibilities um, these are all hypotheses that are still being explored and researched lots of amazing work being done and who knows what we'll see in the future <coughs> what lines of evidence we'll see that support these different viewpoints but we can drill it all the way down to 1.8 million species that we know of today and again this is a moving target that number is changing as we go but we want to kind of figure out what is a species you know, what is the general definition for species and the leading one by by and large is known as the biological species concept this is kind of the leading contender for what is used to define species when this definition is used what we we will say is to be of a species of the same species individuals can breed and produce fertile offspring naturally this is if two individuals can breed and produce fertile offspring naturally they are considered the same species under the biological definition the biological species concept or bsc uh, other definitions kind of the second if you want to say the second leading contender that is often used to define species is this concept known as a phylogenetic species concept phylogenetics says populations are characterized by one or more shared derived characteristics so you are of the same species if members of your population have some unique shared derived characteristic that's going to define you so when you're discussing species with people make sure you know the definition they're using we'll talk more about this with conservation biology it becomes a because it becomes a very important thing to understand what definition is being used changing the definition can often change the conservation status of a population so it becomes very important that everybody's using the same definition when discussing the conservation status of a species okay so you know we'll circle back to this but big picture we talked about the different domains that life is organized in three domains we tend to look at six kingdoms of life you got kingdom u bacteria this is also known as kingdom sometimes you'll see it called kingdom bacteria where those will drop the u bacteria and just go kingdom bacteria um, and we'll we'll go into this kingdom and look at this kingdom what's unique what makes this kingdom different 
Uh, we have Kingdom Archaea. What makes this group unique? What makes it different? What's uh, special about the Archaea? Uh, this one, I'm just going to put the big question mark here. Kingdom Protista is actually, you should, at this point, it's not really recognized anymore. You kind of cross it out and go, eh. We'll get into the classification of the protists. Um, these are weird things. They're not bacteria. They're not archaea. They're basically not things that fit into other kingdoms cleanly. So they go in their own kingdom or what we're calling now supergroups. Uh, we have our traditional kingdom fungi, things that can break down and decompose other organisms. And then we have the all standard traditional kingdom planting, and kingdom animalia. Um, you know, you think about plants run photosynthesis, animals, you eat stuff. But what happens when you get something that can do both? You can run photosynthesis, but also eat things. Are you a plant? Are you an animal? Which kingdom do you go into? So, so classification is changing. That's the fun part. The challenging part is constantly changing, but our knowledge of species is constantly changing and growing, which means we have to change and grow and adapt as well as scientists and as a scientific community. So do not be surprised if what you learn today is different than what you'll learn three, four, five, eight years down the road. Knowledge is constantly growing. So again, we need to change and adjust and adapt as we go. Otherwise, we're going to be outdated and extinct if we can't continue to grow and adapt ourselves. So, all right. So we got systematics under our belt a little bit better. We will constantly be discussing this throughout the semester. So make sure you're comfortable with the basics as we walk our way through all the different groups this semester. We're constantly talking about how they're organized, how they're classified, how the species are arranged, why do we group these things together. That is going to be part of every unit or every chapter for the most part. And then every unit is what are the key features and characteristics and criteria to be in that particular group. All right, so we will then wrap this up here, shut this off here, and then we'll start talking about prokaryotes and viruses as we go into our next chapters of this unit.